Hi, I'm Siobhan Ring and I'm here from the Irish Cattle Breeding Federation here with Dr Stephen Butler from Moor Park and we're, today we're going to be introducing you to the sustainable breeding, what are the options? So to start off I'm going to look at dairy breeding. So we're going to look at the EBI. So to start off I suppose we've been breeding based on the EBI for the past 20 years and we've been mainly focusing on breeding animals that are more productive in terms of milk and also have greater fertility as well as these other individual traits I suppose improving health, uh, beef, calving etc. In more recent times uh, we have started I suppose in, since last November we have introduced a series of updates. So here we have highlighted in black we have introduced an update to health in that we have introduced breeding for TB resistance as a goal trait. We have updated some economic values within the beef as well as introducing the trait age at slaughter. So now we can have more environmentally friendly animals that finish at slaughter earlier in their lifetime. And also we have introduced a carbon sub-index. So what this is, it now brings our economic breeding goal to not just um, an econ economic breeding goal, but also it has sustainability and environmentally um, favourable advantages. So I suppose where can this take us? Well, if we look back over the past 20 years and where have we come from, if we just take fertility, if we look at our six week calving rate back in 2015, it was 57% and now today, just last year, it was 67%. So that's a huge improvement in there and our calving interval has also reduced. So those are both two really favourable improvements and if we look at our milk solids, we've got, gone from 320 kilos up to over 460 kilos on farm delivering more profit for, for our farmers. And we're seeing these trends are delivering on farm, but they're also being seen through the genetic trends. So half of these on farm performance gains are being delivered through improvements in genetics. So moving on from dairy breeding, we need to look at the beef bulls that we are using uh, on our dairy females. So once there are enough female replacements, there is an, an increased opportunity to use beef bull semen. Over the past 10 years, the number of beef sired calves on the ground from the dairy herd has more than tripled. And that's a trend, I suppose, that, ex that is expected to increase. But we need, I suppose, to be cognizant of the bulls that we are using. So a new tool that has been developed by ICBF and Chagask is this dairy, dairy beef index. So what it is, is it's a tool that looks, I suppose, at, at generating really good beef bulls for the dairy herd. So they're ones that have favourable calving attributes, so those that are easy calving and have short gestation, but also those that have really good beef carcass uh, metrics. So in terms of being, you know, heavy carcass weights, good conformation, good fat, low feed intake and, and finish earlier at slaughter. And again, there's also this carbon component included within that dairy beef index. And what this allows you to do is to make sure that you're, you're using bulls that are of high quality uh, index, which then in turn will ensure that the calves that you generate will be in demand uh, you know, by the purchasers that will be buying those animals, or if you're finishing those animals yourself, that they will be of value, I suppose, to the finisher. So how is the finisher going to actually know that those animals are, are, are that you went to the effort of using better dairy beef index bulls? Well, I suppose that's where this extra tool comes in, and that's called the CBV. So it's commercial beef value, which essentially strips out the calving component. So it's when the calf is born on the ground, all we're interested in is all the beef, beef metrics of that animal. So how good is that animal going to be uh, when they finish in terms of their carcass weight, conformation, age of slaughter, feed intake. So what it's telling us is basically that every animal that goes into the mart, they will receive a, a euro figure value. So similar to the EBI, the higher that, that CBV value, the more valuable that calf is to the purchaser who's buying that animal because they're going to make them more money at the end of the day. They're more profitable to, for the system. So based on validation results, we know that for every 10 euro increase in CBV, that equates to 15 euro more profit per animal on the ground. And how do you get a good CBV calf? You need to use a bull that has a dairy beef index with a beef sub-index, so that's this component here, of a minimum of 80 euros. So that's a key message from today, 80 euros minimum beef sub-index uh, on your dairy beef index bulls. So I'm going to hand you over now to Stephen. Great, thank you Sean. 
So we're going to switch gears a little bit now and talk for a few minutes about sex semen. So three questions here. Why use sex semen? How to use sex semen? And what performance can we expect? So the why to use sex semen is in relation to every pregnancy you get with sex semen is a 90% chance of a female dairy calf. So you're, you're able to markedly diminish the number of male dairy calves that will be born on farm and replace those then with a beef cross animal. So on this top graph here, we're looking at the, 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 the situation where there's no sex semen at all being used, all of our dairy female replacements being generated with conventional dairy semen, well, that also gives us an equal number of male dairy calves. So if we're targeting 400,000 female dairy calves per annum with conventional semen, we're also going to get 400,000 male dairy calves. And then on this one here, I'm just showing the effect of increasing the number of sex semen straws that are used to generate those replacements. And ultimately, for us to, to generate all of our female dairy calves using sex semen, we would need to hit a number of about 800,000 sex semen straws. The number for 2023 is roughly somewhere here, somewhere between 250 and 300,000 sex semen straws were available for use this year. So in terms of the journey to get to 800,000, we're about one third of the way there already, which is fantastic progress in a short period of time. Some rules of thumb, for every heifer calf you want to produce, you should plan on using two sex semen straws. Okay, so if you're, if you're a 100 cow herd and you want 27 heifer calves born, purchase 54 sex sorted straws. And then all the other inseminations, all the repeat heats, all the other animals that you don't want replacements from should be targeted for insemination with high DBI beef semen, as Siobhan just mentioned. In terms of the potential calf crop then that are born the following spring, if you're a 100 cow herd, you can have 27 female dairy calves born, but if they're all generated using sex semen, you're down to about three male dairy calves, and then all the remainder will be beef cross. Uh, in terms of how to use, four key things to look at here. One is the, the team of bulls that you're using. Use a large team of bulls. It's often the case that an individual bull has a drop in fertility after going through the sorting process. So using a large team minimizes the chance that any one bull will have a large effect on your herd reproductive performance. In terms of the dams, you should be identifying, first of all, the best genetic merit dams, and then also the best fertility dams. So heifers, first of all, and then the best fertility cows. Uh, timing of AI, so first of all it's for first service only, so it's right at the very start of the breeding season, but then also on the day of when that cow is in heat, the timing of AI is critical. So, so we're targeting 14 to 20 hours after heat onset, and that's because the sex sort of straws are somewhat damaged, the process is damaging, the, the, the viability of those sperm cells is shorter than conventional semen, so we need to inseminate closer to the time of ovulation. And then the last part then is the straw handling on the day of AI. The same situation here, the, the, the cells in those sperm straws our semen straws have been damaged, the, the, the sorting process is damaging, and the thawing procedure, the handling of those straws during the eye procedure is much more critical. So now I'm going to show you some performance data. So this is 2022 performance data that was compiled by, by ICBF, so it's, it's national field data, how it was used, and farmers are targeting sex semen, so it's being targeted at heifers and younger animals, uh, in terms of the lactating cows, they're better EBI cows, so the more, fert more better genetic merit animals in the herd, and they're also been calved for a longer period of time, so they're more fertile, targeting higher fertility animals. And then in terms of the actual performance, so here, the, the pregnancy rate for conventional semen, and in this analysis there's about 300,000 conventional straws included, 35,000 sex semen straws included. You can see that the performance is very similar. 63% pregnancy rate for conventional semen, 60% pregnancy rate for the sex sorted semen. In terms of relative performance, this figure here is 95% as good as this figure here. So really exceptional performance. If you, if you can get all of the, the, the ducks lined up and do everything correctly in terms of picking the right bulls, picking the right cows, handling the semen correctly, you can get really good performance with sex semen. Lastly then, just to mention some new technologies. So obviously if you can see here, if we're going on this journey of using sex semen and we're targeting the best, for best genetic merit dams for sex semen, then we're going to have a big reduction in the number of high EBI male dairy calves. So we need to generate those calves through another method. The other thing here is the, the dairy herd is going to become primarily a source of beef, beef, uh, beef animals. So most of, these, most of the calf crop from the dairy herd will be animals that are destined for beef. So we also need to get real genetic gain in the DBI, which, which Siobhan has outlined, but we need to start selecting intensively for that. So we are doing work uh, using IVF embryos, combining that with sex semen, and there's real promise there that this is going to allow us to accelerate genetic gain even in the face of declining numbers of male dairy calves. Heat detection technologies, so obviously on dairy farms, submission rate is critical, and technologies that aid submission of cows will be beneficial, especially now with, with labour availability on dairy farms. So there's more information on that over in the village. Um, the National DNA Genotyping Strategy was kicked off just uh, a couple of weeks ago, 
And what, what are the big advantages there? So the first one is provenance, so, so better identification of parentage records, uh, breed fractions in a particular animal, uh, genetic gain. So if you're going to be selecting cows or heifers for insemination with sex semen, you want to be sure that you're putting forward the best genetic merit dams for that, and this will help there. And the last part then is performance monitoring. So this is a relatively new uh, idea, but, but if every cow in the herd is genotyped, if you genotype the, the, the bulk milk tank, you can potentially identify the cows that are contributing most to your cell, somatic cell count problems. And then lastly, selection for environmental traits. So there is ongoing work looking at the variability for, for both methane emissions and nitrogen use efficiency, and ultimately those traits could be included in a selection index. So the take home messages from this board, genetic gain has delivered economic, social and environmental benefits and will continue to do so. Use high EBI sex semen to accelerate heifer genetic gain. Use high DBI beef semen for all your non-replacement calves, generate high CBV calves and generating more profit into the beef sector. And then lastly then the reproductive technologies will contribute further gains in terms of the genetic merit of the national herd. Thank you. Yeah.